Welcome back! I'm Tyler, you're watching I'm Telling Tyler, our write-in series where you can ask me questions, tell me the latest tea, and so long as it's at least Lolita adjacent, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. So right off the bat, let's get into our first submission today from Burrito Fish. And Burrito Fish says, I love to wear Lolita and OG fashion. No specific style, I like lots of different things, but I am very allergic to makeup. Can a person wear Lolita without makeup and look good? I've never really seen anyone do it, and I've actually seen multiple articles say that one looks sloppy or ugly without makeup in their cohort, which kind of freaks me out. I actually quite like the way my face looks, is that weird to say? But I have to admit, I feel plain wearing fancy clothes and no makeup. Can a nice cord work without makeup? If not, is there some other way to spruce up my face, like with accessories or something? Or am I doomed to look like a slob? I'm pretty desperate because I don't have social media, Lolita friends, or contact with my community. So huge thanks if this gets featured. I love your channel so much. Well, Burrito Fish, this is an especially ironic look for me to be premiering when you're asking if you can wear Lolita without makeup, because I have apparently decided to wear every scrap of makeup that I own at the same time. But I am happy to report, somewhat ironically, that actually you can, and you absolutely should wear Lolita without makeup if that's what makes you comfortable. Especially if you're fracking allergic to putting products on your face. And while I absolutely understand why you would feel a little dressed down like face-wise when you're this OTT, in comparison if you're going to dress in OTT suite or something like that, and while I do not know what exactly you're allergic to, so take what I'm about to say with a bit of a grain of salt, there are absolutely ways to spruce up your face without caking it in foundation, or wearing every eyeshadow that you own. And one of those ways that I actually want to try is cute little like face gems that you could stick on your face. You could try that too. And when it comes to kind of non-makeup makeup, maybe you could wear a natural kind of lip gloss like Carmex or something like that to dress your lips up a little bit, give them a little bit of a glint. If you already like your skin as is, you can leave it alone and you can accessorize around it. And all in all, when it comes to what you do to your own face, Lolita fashion is what you make of it. You don't necessarily have to come out looking like a butt butterfly having a mental breakdown. So there's absolutely no reason that you, if you are comfortable with how your face already looks or you are allergic to makeup, there's no reason that you cannot then just wear your face as is and still wear the fashion. Because when it comes down to it, the point of wearing this fashion is to wear it for yourself. It's not to impress other people. It's not to abide by some weird standard that you see on Instagram. The lead of fashion at the end of the day is something that is supposed to be enjoyable for you. And that comes from the absolute core of this fashion's beginnings. I.e. the first Lolitas that walked the streets were not doing it for anyone else. They were doing it for themselves. And that is a core component that I want you to keep in mind the next time you're worried about not looking quite right in your cord. We've discussed this before, but the features of someone's face are off the fracking table when it comes to concrete. And while someone like me is obviously getting deeper into the makeup scene because I like how colorful and fun it is, there is no bylaw in Lolita fashion that says you have to put paste on your face to wear a frilly dress. As for any other suggestions, Burrito Fish, I'm sure you'll find more answers in the comments below. I know you guys will have some answers for her that I definitely will not have thought of in these last five minutes. And in summary, go have fun and wear the frilly fracking dress. Thank you for your submission, Burrito Fish. And our next submission, because they did not give me a name to call them by, is going to be from Furball. And Furball says, Hey Tyler, so I've been in the community for a decade now and have always experimented wearing Lolita with furry and I think it looks pretty cute. Unfortunately, with the connotations of being a furry, it gets perceived as something totally different. People assume that what I'm doing is sexual in nature when that's not the case at all. Of course, as someone who participates in the fashion, I understand how certain things come across, but I'd really like to change that and I'm unsure how to do it. How can I I change my image into a cute Victorian maiden ad come to life and not furry number 30,063 waiting to mechs in their suits. I would also like to know your opinion on furries in the community. Thanks in advance, signed 
Furball. All right, Furball, if there's one thing I can commiserate with you over, it's having the thing that has nothing to do with mexing. You know what I'm talking about. Be perceived by the layman public as some kind of R-rated affair. I feel your pain, and I also feel like that is a communal sore spot for furries and lolitas, wherein we may come together and complain. I should say, though, that full disclosure, I am not a furry myself. However, my cousin is. I know for a fracking fact that they do not do it for illicit reasons. And given that alternative communities tend to bump into each other, my experiences as a Lolita have taught me a decent amount about the furry community. What I'm trying to say here is that I understand your struggle, and I sympathize with you having to deal with the perverts that are trying to push themselves into your all-ages spaces. However, with all that said, I'm afraid I do not have an easy answer for you when it comes to cleaning up your community's image. Lolitas have been working on that for some time now with some success. But as you know, on the internet, the more shocking things tend to rise to the top. And for every God-fearing furry that is not trying to yiff everything that moves, you have shit like Rainforest, which is like Dashcon, but the ball pit is full of dildos. Those of you who have no idea what I'm talking about can look it up on your own time. I'm not going back to that mental place. That said, well, I cannot solve your community's problem with public perception. That's just gonna have to be something that you all work on together. I can help you when it comes to fursuits and Lolita. Mind you, this is based on my opinion, but of course it's my opinion. It's my frackin' show. So to answer your query on how I feel about furries in the community, I think it is A, doable, and B, comes with a few stipulations. The following stipulations are going to specifically apply to Sweet Lolita. The stipulations will be a little bit different for classic, punk, or goth. However, when it comes to my area of expertise, which is Sweet Lolita, few things look more jarring in Sweet Lolita, which has a whimsical elegance and cuteness to it, than a toonie suit, or fursuits meant to be incredibly realistic. Toonie suits have a western cartoon look to them that usually does not mesh too well with the Japanese sweet style OTT look. Their neon colors usually look a little off when clashed with these sweet pastels. And even when they're in more natural colors, such as the image you're looking at right now on your screen, this like gray and brown, it still looks weird when you put it next to something that is supposed to be a Japanese kawaii, soft aesthetic. To me, it's like you're trying to slam Batman the Animated Series into Sailor Moon. Both things are good on their own, but when you smush them together and tell them to kiss, things look a little weird. The aesthetics generally don't go together, there's kind of a clash in tone, and I think we can all agree that billionaire vigilantes that dress as bats should not be hanging out with high school girls. Meanwhile, to address the more realistic fursuits that you see from creators like Clockwork Creature, fantastic job, beautiful suit, still doesn't go with Lolita. Again, we're specifying sweet Lolita. To me, it is only slightly less disjointed looking when you combine this with something that is a little too realistic on the fursuit spectrum. This is the same reason that wearing hyper-realistic cat or bunny ears looks weird when it comes to OTT Sweet, but the stuffed animal type lyrical bunny headband the AP releases like twice a year looks perfectly fine. In this instance, we're talking about taking National Geographic and trying to get it to hump Princess Tutu, a disturbing image that I gave you on purpose because these two things do not go together. All that said, that does not mean that all hope is lost because there is a way to properly do furry with Sweet Lolita. And to put it bluntly, you either need to wear a Japanese-made fursuit or a suit that was inspired by it. This is how you do it. This is a fursuiter from someone who calls themselves Luna. I managed to find their fur affinity, and you'll notice that they are a Japanese fursuiter wearing angelic pretty. Their suit is neither toony nor hyper-realistic, and is highly reminiscent of the cute little animals that you will find on Sweet Lolita prints. This same style can also be found in the Wish Me Mel mascot that's also wearing an angelic pretty Wish Me Mail collaboration, and you will notice once more that we are looking at a cute pastel color palette that is neither jarringly Western or distractingly realistic. And in short, both of these suits have an air of cuteness to them that complements what they're wearing. 
this is the aesthetic that I would recommend aiming for if you want to do furry and sweet Lolita at the same time. I would like to remind you at this point that this obviously does not encompass every type of fursuit out there, and I'm sure there are exceptions to what I have told you today. But in summary, when it comes to the western, toony, or hyper-realistic fursuits versus the more kawaii-inclined fursuits from Japan, it is unsurprising that Lolita, that also started in Japan, tends to clash with western fursuit aesthetics. Can it be done decently in a way that I'm currently not thinking of because I am not a fursuiter myself? I'm sure it could be. Is the average western fursuit combined with Lolita gonna get you some weird fracking looks at meetups? Also yes, and don't come crying to me when you didn't follow any of my fracking advice. At the end of the day, you have asked a pastel elitist how I feel about fursuiters, and furball, I gave you my best shot. And in all seriousness, in no way do I begrudge furries enjoying Lolita fashion so long as they keep their shitty opinions a fuck off Twitter. You need to come get your own before I round them up myself. I'd like to thank Furball for that awesome submission. That's about all the time we have for tonight. This has been Tyler. And one more time, if you'd like to submit to I'm Telling Tyler, you can send your tea and or queries to I'm Telling Tyler at gmail.com. I'd like to thank my patrons for sitting through whatever the fuck you just watched. And should you like to join their number, you can head over to patreon.com slash News for more content that I don't recommend you watch ever for any reason. Thanks again, guys, and I'll catch you next time.